As far as microcontrollers are concerned, there are thousands of options for you to pick from. They range from 8-bit AVRs all the way to the 32-bit STM microcontrollers. The 32-bit microcontrollers are becoming far more popular in modern projects because of their speed and usability, but 8-bit microcontrollers still remain extremely popular in hobbyist settings. This can especially be attributed to the popularity of the Arduino, which uses a wide range of AVR microcontrollers, especially the Arduino Uno, which uses the now famous Atmega 328P. However, Microchip, which now owns Atmail, has released a new line of AVR microcontrollers, which they call the Mega AVR Zero Series. This new series has a lot of improvements over the older AVR ships, and in this video we will review the changes made in the new series and determine whether you should start using them in your own projects. Because although they both share the Atmega name, they aren't exactly the same. To start, let's look at the costs of the microcontrollers themselves, because that is the thing that will determine if the new series and its features are worth the cost. For this comparison, we will look at the Atmega 328P and the Atmega 4808, because they both are about the most powerful version of the other microcontrollers in their series. It is also worth keeping in mind that the other microcontrollers in their series are exactly the same, with the exception that their available RAM and flash is lower in exchange for a lower price. Anyways, a DigiKey 1 Atmega 328P costs $3.11. On the other hand, the Atmega 4808 only costs $1.85, again at DigiKey, which makes it far more cost effective on a per chip basis. Another point to mention is that the newer Atmega 4808 actually has stock at the time of making this video, whereas the older Atmega 328P has a serious shortage, meaning that the only way to obtain one of these chips is to literally just buy a pre-made board off eBay or similar and to solder the chip from it. So anyways, let's take a look at the features to see if the cost really tells us if the new AVRs are really better and more cost effective. Let's start with the basic specifications of performance on both of these microcontrollers, all of which can be found on the datasheet of each microcontroller respectively. The 328 has 32 kilobytes of flash memory, whereas the 4808 has 48 kilobytes of flash. The 328 has one kilobyte of EEPROM, and the 4808 has a smaller 256 bytes of EEPROM. The 328 has 2 kilobytes of SRAM, and the 4808 has 6 kilobytes of SRAM. Both of them have a maximum clock speed of 20 MHz, however it is worth noting that the 328 requires an external clock source to reach those speeds, whereas the 4808 can be configured to run with an internal 20 MHz clock, reducing the total part count required when higher clock speeds are needed. They both run the AVR CPU internally, so they are just about the same when it comes to the CPU architecture. So far, it seems that the 4808 is winning when it comes to CPU resources, but that is only a part of the considerations that need to be made when choosing a new microcontroller. Now, let's take a look at the peripherals, because that really is the most important part of a microcontroller in most cases. Starting with the general purpose I.O., both of them have 23 I.O. pins, unless you opted to buy the 32 pin at Mega 4808, and that one has 27 I.O. pins. The 328 has one 16-bit and two 8-bit hardware timers. The 4808, on the other hand, does much better in this regard, because not only does it have four 16-bit hardware timers, but it also has a 16-bit RTC that can be run from an external crystal. So if your project has a lot of hardware timing needs, you probably can see the benefit of the new AVR series. Continuing onward, the 328 only has one USART, which oftentimes is already taken up by the Arduino bootloader, if you are using an Arduino on it, that is. And the 4808 has three USARTs. They both have an ADC, but the 328 only has 6 or 8 channels depending on the package you chose, and the 4808 has 8 or 12 channels, again depending on the package. Many of the other features are still the same, such as 1 SPI, 1 TWI, and 1 analog comparator. However, one of the things that really sets the 4808 apart from the 328 is the CCL, or Configurable Custom Logic, and also the Event System. These two new systems really change how you work with your microcontrollers. First, the CCL allows us to create our own logic system between internal and external peripherals without any CPUs or extra logic hardware. The event system allows us to create links between internal peripherals and cause actions without having to alert the CPU. These two features allow for cleaner code execution because the CPU will not have to execute as much code when the hardware automatically handles connections between peripherals. So, the improved peripherals in the 4808 are definitely a big selling point and will be very convenient when it comes to designing a project with this microcontroller. 
However, there is still another important aspect of use that we have to cover, and that is how we will be programming these microcontrollers. On the older AVRs, we typically used ISP to program. Unless you are using an Arduino or similar, and in that case, it would have been via bootloader reading from the UART. When using ISP programming, there are several methods to do so. I used to use this AVR ISP Mark II for a while, and that was until I upgraded to the Atmel ICE, which I do recommend by the way. If you feel that these programmers are too expensive, you can also opt for using another microcontroller as a programmer over ISP, because it is simply just the SPI protocol. Another programming method for the older AVRs is the pin intensive parallel programming method. While I do not typically use this method, it is useful for saving the microcontroller if you accidentally program the fuse incorrectly. On the other hand, the new Mega AVRs use the UART based UPDI, which stands for Unified Program and Debug Interface. This is why I bought the Atmel ICE, because it supports both UPDI and ISP, while the AVR ISP Mark II only supports ISP. UPDI is the best so far in terms of pin use, because it only requires one pin, three if you count VCC and ground. If you don't want to buy a programmer, there is another more complicated method involving a USB to URIC, such as the CH340, because UPDI is UART based, but I will cover that more in a future video. So if you plan to start using either of these microcontrollers, just keep in mind which programmers you already have and which you'll have to buy or make. If you aren't sure, just remember that the Atmel IS can program both of the microcontrollers. It can also program Atmel SAM series MCUs, but that's outside of the scope of this video. Another thing to note for hobbyists is the packages that these microcontrollers come in. The older AVRs, such as the Mega 328, all have both SMD and DIP packages available. However, the new AVRs, or the Atmega 4808, are only available in SMD packages, meaning that if you plan to use them on a breadboard, you will have to make an adapter. However, if you are using a development board, the package shouldn't matter too much. Now let's figure out the differences between both of them when it comes to writing code. They are both similar, just with additional registers on the 4808. However, the 328 has a massive advantage in that it has a couple of communities behind it with a lot of code already written. Places like AVR Freaks already discuss the workings of AVR microcontrollers, and the Arduino community already has so many libraries and example sketches written that even if you aren't using Arduino, you can still find examples that will help you finish your project. While the 4808 does not have these advantages, it will get some more support over time, especially considering that the Arduino has released their new Arduino board with the 4808 on board. However, if you are still learning how to use these microcontrollers, it is definitely worth thinking about whether you will need some more support when writing code for your project. Now to demonstrate how controlling the two microcontrollers is different, I will be writing an example program that will dim and brighten an LED using the hardware timer to generate a PWM signal. For this test, I will be using my own custom boards that I made for these chips, and the schematic and code for each one will be found in the description. Ultimately, I'd say that writing code for both of them was about the same, but the 4808 has a lot more registers, which makes it a little more complicated to write for, but gives you a lot more control over how the function of your microcontroller will be. So after reviewing both of these microcontrollers, it's clear to say that the new Mega AVR series is actually more cost effective and has better features overall. If you're able to write code for the Mega AVR series, I would say that it is the clearer the better choice. However, if you are still new to electronics and microcontrollers in general, then you might want to stick with the old AVR series because of its immense support and existing codebase. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider subscribing so that you can see the other videos that I make. Have a good one!